Hi Troops, welcome back. We are at the American Academy of Thermology in Greenville, South Carolina. It's the conference for October 2012. I am so pleased to introduce you to Jan Crawford. She is one of, she is the second female student of Dr. William Hobbins. We are the only females that he practiced with for breast thermography. And I just want to introduce you to Jan Crawford and have her explain what she does. So Jan, how did you get involved with Dr. Hobbins? Thank you for interviewing me. Um, I joined Dr. Hobbins 10 years ago um, when I became interested in thermography as evaluation for um, both screening for breast and also evaluation for pain problems. And as a nurse, I need to practice under the direction of a physician according to the Illinois licensure. So I found Dr. Hobbins, who is just a, about 80 miles away in Madison, Wisconsin. And under the guidelines of the American Academy, um, I was able to send all my studies to Dr. Hobbins for his review and approval so that the Academy would certify me as a qualified practitioner. I do run an independent lab. However, all my testing goes to Dr. Hobbins for interpretation. Um, because of my nursing license, I don't have that uh, flexibility in order to interpret a scan. So thankfully, Dr. Hobbins has been uh, my mentor for 10 years, and he's been invaluable because he is one of the um, originators in the association, as well as one of our only surviving members from thermography starting you know, in the 60s and its utilization in clinical practice. So I'm very privileged to be able to work under Dr. Hobbins and also to have a second female to do breast imaging and to follow the qualified guidelines of the American Academy, which I believe are essential for um, good images and also for accurate reports that will help the women in identifying potential risk index for um, breast cancer or other breast disease problems. Thank you, Jan. Jan, can you please tell me how you implement breast thermography on a daily basis in your clinic? Sure. Thank you, Wendy. What I do is um, I have women come to my office. I screen them, first of all, send them a questionnaire that outlines um, what they need to and not do because there's so many more things to not do before a breast thermogram than there are to do before a breast thermogram. So they need to be properly prepped and then ready to participate in the exam itself. I don't think a lot of women understand that you need to expose the skin in order to have an appropriate reading and that we have to acclimate in a cool environment. So I try to make them aware of all that information ahead of time. A lot of them have questions because they're really not sure what role thermography plays mm -hmm. in their um, one in their screening and two in their diagnosis. So I try to help them understand that we can serve two purposes. We can be um, a risk indicator for problems with breast health. So it's not just breast cancer that I'm concerned with. I'm concerned more with looking at breast disease because if we're actually going to operate in a preventative setting, we have to be able to identify that. So a lot of my younger patients, I try to encourage them for uh, if not more than annual, at least annual evaluation because they're the ones that are exposed mostly to hormone use, whether it's in birth control or bioidentical hormones. Yes. And we really have to monitor the effect because each one of us being individual yes. has a different yes. response to those hormones exactly. and how our body utilizes them. Exactly. So it's a very good monitoring tool it is. for uh, treatment efficacy. Yes. The other thing is in the disease process for those identified with breast cancer. Um, we have two uh, types of breast cancer, and I'm not talking the diagnostic cellular structure. I'm talking about the aggressive cancer of the younger woman and also the disease of the older woman, which yes. most often can be treated um, without you know, the potential of early death. But the young woman needs to monitor because those aggressive cancers start quickly mm -hmm. as far as the signaling mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so that intensity needs to be followed and needs to be uh, determined. Probably for women that look at alternative practice, I need them to understand that if they're going to monitor risk with breast thermography, they have to determine how they're going to take care of themselves and which practitioners they're going to utilize in order to monitor this testing because many standard allopathic physicians don't have a belief system 
in thermography, even as a risk indicator. And so these women are kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. They need to have a practitioner that they can go to with confidence, both for treatment, you know, as well as monitoring. So this um, aggressive breast cancer in the young female uh, might require every three months in order to determine if the, there's treatment efficacy. Mm -hmm. Women have to make up their mind. Are we going to go conventional or are we going to go alternative? Because once you you know, make it a treatment attempt, you have to be able to determine if it's effective. Yes, yes. And then you have to be able to change pathways Yes. if you're not seeing that aggression, you know, become, to, you know, start to recede. Can you please explain this to our listeners, the importance of qualified breast thermography in monitoring these treatments? That's what I'm trying to explain to our sure. listeners. Well, I believe that in order to have an exam that you can compare time after time, it's like any scientific uh, tool, we have to have it set up in the appropriate manner so that it's repeatable and the information can be trusted as repeatable and comparable. Meaning so, we're meeting the minimum standard requirements for each screening. Correct. And that way we can take the screening from three months ago and compare it to the original exactly. or six months or five years. The, the lab is set up in such a way that the woman has confidence that the changes she's seeing are her body, yes. not the lab, exactly. Um, because we do have many variables that we have to control when doing thermal imaging. Yes, we do. It's yeah. not like uh, you know, a compression with radiation, um, although they have many of the same criteria that women don't realize that just changing the compression of the breast can change how you see a tumor. So we have to be able to repeat that test effectively for good you know, information and treatment. And efficacy. Yes. Jan, thank you so much. I appreciate yes. the opportunity. And we really, and again, ladies, this is what we're trying to express, is screening and monitoring these small changes in our breast health. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, troops. It only takes one to start a revolution. Spread the word. Show your support for breast thermography and breast health with the I Heart TT sticker. Flash your TTs everywhere and then post it on our Facebook page.